Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can make a site plan using just some graph paper, a pencil, and a measuring wheel. A site plan is important because no matter what job site you're working on, if you're installing landscape, you're going to need a map so that you know what you're doing. You're going to want to be able to see what's already there, and you're going to want to plan out what you need to do in the future. For these reasons, a site plan is perfect. It'll also help you calculate bed space, which is helpful for calculating material costs later on in the process. A site plan is also a great visual guide that you can give to your customer because the customer normally interfaces with the bid that you've given them, but the site plan gives them a map that shows them here's what's going to be done and here's what will be different about your landscape once we're completed. So if you want a map to your project, site plans are gonna be very important and here's how you make them. Step one, we're gonna measure the property left to right and front to back to make sure that the scale that we use fits on our grid paper. Front to back, we are looking at 177, which I'm just gonna write down here. Nor ordinarily, I would want to use 1 8 scale, which means every one of these little blocks here, which is exactly 1 8 inch, would equal one foot in the real world. For something this big, we would want to bump it up to 1 16th or 1 30 seconds. However, because I know that I'm going to be working only around the house, that's the only place where I'm going to measure. So I'm gonna measure the distance from one side of the house to the other, and then front to back. My new measurements are 114 front to back and 90 side to side. This is gonna be much easier to fit on my paper and work with as a design. I'm going to be able to get more detail out of it because I'm working in a larger fraction rather than a smaller one. At this point, I'm going to determine my edges. So from this point, I'm gonna count over 90 to this side. I've now found the edges of the property. From here to here is 90 feet across at 1 16th scale. Now I need to find the boundaries of the front and back. Do the exact same thing and establish those boundaries on your paper before you get started. And there we have it, the front and back coordinates. Within here is where we are going to make our design. Now how you begin a design and create a design from there is like dot to dots. You have to create a standard point where you are starting from and then you need to map out from that area distances on the grid form. With our design what we are trying to do is take this property and put it onto the grid paper here. So imagine a grid where every square equals two feet exactly, mapping this entire thing out. I'm gonna choose a prime corner where my initial measurements are going to come from. And right now I choose the corner of the driveway. Now your prime corner is going to change as the design goes on, but we'll get to that later. The first thing I'm gonna do is establish where the corner of the driveway is on the plan relative to the left and right axis. So I'm gonna find where on here the corner starts. And I have determined that the prime corner starts right here. Now that I've located a prime corner, I'm going to use it to locate the largest and most immovable objects on the job site, like the house, the garage, any walkways or hardscapes. I've determined that the driveway is 16 feet across, so I'm going to put another dot right on the edge there. Measuring straight down from the axis corner, the sidewalk starts at 13 and 17. So I marked those with each with a dot. Then the driveway continues along this line till it branches out towards the house at 58 and then meets the garage at 62. So I've marked each of those with a dot and I can connect the lines that belong together. Wherever there is a straight edge, I can connect it. I will now do the same to the other side and map out the garage. Now that I've mapped this, I can measure straight down from this side of the drive to find out where it is and where the front of the garage is in relative coordinates to this corner. You come relatively straight down and then angle up. Jumping to the garage, I measured out from this point over two feet and found out that that is where the corner is. Measuring across the garage, it measured 24 feet to the opposite corner. Hence, I'd established this corner. I'm going to connect those and then I'm going to connect these two. Now that we've established where the drive and the garage are, let's look at the front of the house and get that established before we move to the back. We're now going to start measuring the front of the house. And for this, and for the purposes of this section, I already got going by measuring the walkway, the front door, and the house out to each corner. 
What we still need to get are these beds. You can see they follow a curve or a natural angle. So how are we gonna measure those when we're using a grid system to measure everything else? So here is the house. The front wall comes out this way and I measured over to this point. Then this became my new prime corner and I used it to measure over to the house, over to the tree and over to this point, which was about middle of the tree and then up to the tree to discover where that was. Then what I could do is infer that this line met up with this line and it came straight across. So if this was three feet across, I could come up to here and then connect these two dots. From there, I could measure down to here and measure over to the edge of the house, determining its corner. From this corner of the house, you can measure how wide the porch is and then measure the entirety of the porch. And from here, you can also measure this distance, which can tell you the, different, the distance of the steps. Because the landscape is so thick in here and I would have made it hard to get an accurate reading, I measured from this point on the sidewalk out to here. And how I measure and make sure that I'm getting directly on this line is I just line up with my eyes and I see when does this become a flat surface or when does the far edge of this disappear because I can't see around it anymore. And then I measure from there to the house and I do the same thing with the house. When does the house become flat? And when, if I back up, does the back half of the house disappear? So that's how I established this corner. And then to double check it, I measured from the hard surface of the driveway over to the house, just to make sure that those numbers match, and they did. So I know that that's good. But now we're working on the bed edges. And the bed edge right here, I measured out three feet and to the top of this arc and found that that was six feet out. So I know that this goes straight out for a little and then curves up around this corner, but I don't know where this goes. That's what we need to determine here. It works like this. I'm gonna measure straight up off of the corner of the house. Six feet, nine inches. We're gonna say seven. I'm gonna make a dot, and then I'm gonna go two feet in. Now, because this bush is here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up straight out, keeping my eye on the spot. I'm gonna determine that it's right here, and then I'm gonna line up straight across the house, come straight back, and go at a place where I can actually access with my wheel straight to the house. That's 10 feet in at two feet over. And then I'm gonna repeat that process. We're gonna go four feet over. You know what? I'm gonna take it one further. We're gonna go five feet over because we can. Once I found five feet over, I'm gonna go straight out and we're gonna end there, 13 feet. So here's what I've learned. The path goes like this over to there. Kind of does one of these little curves here, right to the tree, which is actually more in this area. So I'm just gonna draw an X there and redraw it here. The important thing to remember with this plan is that you want accuracy. So with that, I messed up the tree. Instead of getting disgruntled about it or just insisting that it was where I originally measured it, I just removed it, X'd it out, and moved it to where more accurate measurements revealed it to actually be. Remember what you're trying to do here is take a physical space and cram it onto some paper in a two-dimensional overhead form. The importance of this being that it might translate to your bid being short or high by a couple hundred or a couple thousand bucks. Now that we have one front bed done, let's do the other. I can see that the stones tie right in here to the sidewalk or the porch and I'm going to measure straight out along them to where they start to deviate from that straight line. It is nine feet exactly. And I can double check this by measuring straight across to my hard surface and then double checking that on my map. It looks right, nine feet. I'm just gonna put a dot there. Now what I can do is I can see that right here at this point, the stones meet back up with my hard surface. So rather than gridding this whole, out, the whole thing out and measuring over multiple times, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure right along this hard surface from the apex of where these stones meet back to the corner of the front walk over there. And that distance is 19 feet exactly, which means that 19 feet out is the apex of this curve. So I'm gonna mark that quick. And I'm gonna connect those dots to the respective places. I know that this stone wall has a little S curve in it, so I'm just gonna add that in. So over here, the stone wall doesn't quite reach the edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure off of this corner and I'm gonna measure down till I think it's about at the apex and then I'm gonna measure over. Those measurements are three feet 
and two feet. Now on the back side over here, what I'm gonna do is use the grid system and principles to find out where the edge of the bed actually is. So straight down from this corner, I'm gonna go all the way till it meets the house. That's 14 feet by 12 feet. Since it's 14 down, now I'm going to divide it in half and go seven feet. Two feet over. I'm gonna connect those dots. And I'm gonna repeat that again. So now instead of seven, I'm gonna go 10 and five feet over, okay. Then I'm gonna go 12 feet down and over from there, seven. So here is what I found. We went out from this corner, nine feet, and then we went up to here, 19 feet. We used the grid method to discover that over here at these points, the bed line followed this movement here. So I know that this is a straight line here, but because it does curve, I'm gonna add a little curve here because I know that the wall isn't straight at any one point. So it makes sense that instead of going straight from point A to point B, it curves just a little bit. And then right here I noticed that the spigot for this downspout comes out there. So I'm just gonna draw that there and make a little circle to indicate that that's a downspout. Now that we've got the beds, it's time to get the plants and the lampposts inside the bed. And we're gonna do this by using the grid method. First up is the lamppost. We are going to measure over from our prime corner to the lamppost, four feet, and then over from the bed edge to the lamppost, three feet. So that is four feet over, four, and then three feet in, right here, that is the lamppost. And I like to use this little symbol for lamp. Now when you're dealing with thick vegetation like this, it's sometimes easier to use something stable like the lamppost as your new prime corner and measure out from there. And it's a way easier to do this with a tape measure rather than a wheel, but I've just got a wheel, so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure over to here and then picking up the wheel and making sure it doesn't turn, don't turn. I'm gonna keep it right on point to here. Four feet, over. And I'm gonna draw a holly bush that's roughly that size. So I'm just gonna line up the lamp post to my solid surface. And I'm gonna measure straight down to center mass of this bush, four feet. So right here we lined up center to this lamp post and then we measured down four feet to the center mass of this bush right here. I'm just gonna draw a circle, no texture for that guy. Now for the big guy. After many a harrowing adventure, I've discovered that this big guy is three feet off of the corner of the house. So from the corner of the house, up three feet, and then it takes up this entire space here. And there is nothing in this section of the bed, so I'm not even gonna worry about it. Same thing over here. There's maybe just that bush right there, which I measured out to be two feet off, so there he is. Now that you've got the front of the house taken care of and you've marked out the beds and plants, the hardscapes and the front edges of the house, it's time to move around to the sides and back and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna start up here at the corner. I'm gonna measure the entire thing, front to back. That is 24 feet. And I'm gonna mark that down here. I'm gonna backtrack. You'll see these two window wells for the basement. This one starts at four feet in and ends at eight feet in. And then the distance between this one and the next guy is eight feet. And again, it's four feet across. Two window wells, one side of the house. And before I measure the rest of this house side, what I'm gonna do quick is there's some large rocks here. I'm gonna measure out and find where those are. Five feet by three feet. And these rocks are four foot on center. Puts them with a two foot radius and the label that rock. Then I'm gonna measure out to the bushes. I'm gonna go straight out. 11 over seven, put that in. And that's just the edge of the bush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the entire thing all the way across. So it is five feet. We're gonna put that as a diameter. I'm gonna come back to the prime corner and then go off of this. Right up, 22 and over seven. And there we have it for this side. We've got the edge here, the two window wells, and the two, I think they're honeysuckle, and then some rocks. Now back at this section, you might notice that there are utilities. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that we denote those because if we're doing any kind of digging in this area, one, we should be calling the maintenance and utility companies and making sure that those things are marked. But two, it's just good to know where this stuff is so that when you are planning out your landscape, you're not planting something on top of the gas line that requires a ton of digging. Starting from the prime corner, I'm going to map off and find the corner of the house at 12 feet. I'm gonna measure from the back of the house up to the corner here. It's another 12 feet. From here over to the edge of the back stoop, that is three feet. And then from the back stoop, 
We're gonna go up the corner of the back stoop. That is five feet. And from there, we're gonna go eight feet. Connecting the dots. And then I'm gonna measure from the back stoop over to the corner of the house. And again, I'm gonna line up the corner of the house with my eyes and make sure that I'm out by the edge. It's nine feet. And there we have it. The house is completed. It's all the way around and all the lines are connected. And because they lined up perfectly, I know that I didn't miss any of my measurements on the other side. If you're having trouble with this by like a half foot or so, just connect them. It's not that big of a deal. But if it's off by more than a foot or so, you know that you messed up something on the other side of the property. So now that that's done, I'm gonna measure out these hardscapes here between the garage and the house and make sure that I get those. There's a little bed in here that is one and a half feet, two feet off the house over here. And there we have it. The back stoop area is connected and the garage, there's a garage door here, so I'm just gonna draw a door symbol like that, a slanting inward door with the arc of its swing. So those are three doors and this is the back corner here. Now we still need to get our utilities. Gas is four feet in and the air conditioning unit starts at seven feet in and goes to 10 feet. So the gas starts at four feet in. I'm gonna count in to four and then I'm gonna put a little box here. That's how I like to do gas. I even label it sometimes gas. Right there. And then seven feet in is where the air conditioning unit starts and it goes till 10 feet in. So right here, it's more or less a square. You may have also noticed that there is a clothesline right here. And that's important because there are two clothesline poles on either end that anchor it to the ground. So we're gonna wanna get those because those are immovable objects. And unless we intend to remove them, they're gonna stay right there and be in the way of our landscaping. Now that we've got this side of the house done, it's time to move on to the garage. Now with the garage, we've already measured up to the corner of the door over there. So that's where we're gonna start and we're just gonna move clockwise around the building. Measure from the corner up to the edge of the building. That's gonna come in at 29 feet. Mark that down. Now I'm just gonna put a dot. Now I'm gonna measure along the back edge of the garage. It's just as I suspected, the garage is in fact a rectangle and not some weird parallelogram. So what I can do now, because the first thing that we did was measure the front of the garage, or the front face of the garage at 24 feet, is I can now map out that and infer that the other side of the garage is right here. Because we already mapped this out, it is going to be obvious that it's right here. Because this is, in fact, a rectangle. Shocking. Now that we know those numbers, it's time to measure out the trees over here and make sure that we know where they're at so that they don't hinder our landscape plan or so that they help our landscape plan, depending on how you look at it. Measuring up from the corner, eight feet over four, that's our first tree. And then repeating the process, 14 feet up, five feet over. So now I wanna figure out where the branches are on this tree. And I'm just gonna pop my measurement on from right here and go straight to the center. 21 feet from the edge of the branches to the center of the tree. And I'm just gonna carry that on through the rest of the plan. As you can see right here, I'm just putting little dots where I think the tree's shade reaches to. And there you have it. That is how you measure out a property using only a pen, a piece of grid paper, and a measuring wheel or a tape measure if that's all you've got. Join me in the next video as we talk about how to do pull throughs and make this plan into a site plan that you can use on the job site and that you can present to your customer to give them an idea of what you're actually going to be doing on their project.